This is episode 36 of the Online Playmaker Sessions with Online Attraction Marketing and Automation Authority, Tyson Zahner. Welcome to the Online Playmaker Sessions. This is the place for the latest What's Working Now strategies from the best online playmakers, the top marketers, the rising stars who are making it happen right now. Every week, you'll get real, actionable lessons that you can take and apply immediately in your business, delivered in short 20-minute sessions. Our focus is your results. Here's your host, entrepreneur, world-class trainer, and marketing strategist, Norbert Orlowitz. Hello, online playmakers. If this is your first time tuning in to the Playmaker Sessions, thank you for choosing us. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. And if you prefer video, our YouTube channel at onlineprofitplaybook.tv. As with all of our episodes, we have all the show notes, transcripts, and actionable tips over on the blog. Just head over to www.onlineprofitplaybook.com. You'll also be able to get access to my complimentary five-video tutorial series on building the proper foundation for your online business, as well as several other free trainings, including my Instant Income Multiplier tutorial. And if you're ready to multiply your results fast, check out the premium membership of our online profit playbook where our guests open up their closely guarded playbooks and walk you step by step through the exact marketing funnels and sales process they use to build their audience grow their influence and make sales get the coveted online profit playbook today just head over to onlineprofitplaybook.com and join the playmakers Tyson Zahner is an authority in the field of online attraction marketing and marketing automation. He is a lifelong entrepreneur currently running three successful businesses. Like many, Tyson struggled in three different network marketing companies over a period of 15 years before he finally started having success using attraction marketing strategies on the internet. He is recognized in our community for engineering one of the fastest online success stories in recent history with his amazing ability to create instant goodwill and loyalty with cold prospects. In less than 12 months, Tyson was making over 20000 per month, all with free residual traffic strategies, and he did it part-time while continuing to run his full-time photography studio, as well as being a husband and a father. Tyson loves working with small business owners, network marketers, and entrepreneurs who want to learn how to use smart, automated marketing funnels to get more traffic, leads, and sales. This week's online playmaker, Tyson Zahner. All right, welcome back, everybody. Episode 36 of the Online Playmaker Sessions. And uh, today we got a special guest. I'm really excited to learn more about Tyson and his business and what he's doing in his business right now to create results. Uh, so with that, Tyson Zanner, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Norbert. It's great to be here. Good to see you all. Awesome, awesome. My pleasure to have you here. Uh, it was great to to finally meet you in person in San Diego at the No Excuses Summit. And, uh, you know, as soon as I saw you, I was like, oh, yeah, I got to get Tyson on this show. So uh, really great. I'm really glad that you, uh, that you, accept, you accepted the invitation. And uh, we're going to get to learn a little bit more about what you've been doing in your business. So Tyson, take us back here first of all. Let's go back a little bit to the beginning because I know you're having some great success right now, but I'm sure it wasn't like that right from the beginning. No. So maybe (laughs) share with us a little bit about how you got involved in internet marketing first of all because that's always an interesting story. Take us back to the beginnings here. Sure. Um, Well, for me, it stemmed from, as I know a lot of people's stories do, it actually stemmed from, uh, from network marketing. I was uh, in a large pool of failed network marketers who were struggling <laughs> with kind of the traditional way that everybody said you were supposed to build the business with friends and family. I had done that for, uh, gosh, 15, 18 years, something like that. I mean, I had I, wow. I'd been in and out of three different companies, never able to recruit anybody using the old school methods. And um, I kept, for, I don't know, for some reason, I kept saying yes to the business model and finally got involved in a company uh, back in 2013. It was a health and wellness company. This was my third one. And I was just like, something's got to give, something's got to change. And so went online kind of looking for alternate ways and uh, ran across, you know, some 
some material about attraction marketing and started studying and found it really fit my personality. And as they say, the rest is history. And uh, since then, I've, you know, I mean, I've gone on to build network marketing organizations with attraction marketing. I've gone on to use that to, um, you know, create, uh, you know, become a top earner in a, in a popular online affiliate program. And, uh, to, you know, I've even used, used those strategies in my online brick and mortar businesses as well. So it's, it was definitely a, a very, uh, profitable, um, find for me, so to speak. Yeah, that's awesome. We were just talking about that. You've got three businesses, um, that you actually run a separate from your, got your online marketing business, but you've got two tr traditional brick and mortar type businesses as well, right? I do. That's correct. I, um, I have a shaved ice business that I started back when I was probably, I was in high school. I think it was 17 years old when I started that business. So I've had that, uh, gosh, I'm 39 now. So uh, I've had that over half my life. Wow. And uh, yeah, so we've, that's like a, you know, it's just kind of a seasonal thing. We have a manager that runs that. Um, but then I've got a, I've got an online photography, I'm not online, but I've got a, a brick and mortar photography studio. We do a lot of high school senior portraits, uh, which are big here in the Midwest. And we do a lot of wedding photography and, uh, and, and I've used a lot of, of these attraction strategies to market my, my photography business online. So I think that's one of the things that's really great is really, I, I think no matter what kind of business you're in, if you really take the time to learn marketing the right way, you can use it for just about any business uh, to get more leads and customers and really to do things that your competition are just not taking the time to learn how to do. So it will definitely, it's a skill set that will definitely give you a, a huge return on your investment in yourself to learn it. Yeah, ab absolutely. I totally believe that too. I mean, I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of the students that have come through our systems and our training, you know, they've not, they've, some have applied it to network marketing, some have built online businesses and some have taken it and applied it to their traditional businesses and, and have gone back to that and, and created incredible success. So it really is, Right. It's really about learning those fundamentals of marketing, isn't it? I mean, that's that's what really the secret is about. Now, let, let's go back to the network marketing industry sure. and to those years of struggle that you had. And I know you probably, you might want to forget about those years, but there's some valuable lessons in there, as you and I both know. And maybe let's just talk about that really quickly here, because I'm interested, you know, there's a lot of people that can relate to your story. You know, sure. I, I, I had a similar experience myself being in network marketing, just really struggling to get anything going. Why do you think it is that some of us struggle so much with the, the traditional the traditional way of building a network marketing business? I mean, you know, you stayed in it for 15 years, but that's a long time to struggle. What do you think it is that prevents us from creating success in the traditional way? Oh, I think there's several factors. I think probably the biggest one is that network marketing is a business model that, especially in the traditional way, that it was designed, was designed for extroverts. It was designed for people who love doing, you know, parties and meeting with people one-on-one -on -one and going to events. And I found out without understanding myself all that well, that I'm a much more introverted person. I'm way more comfortable sitting in the comfort of my home, you know, doing a training like this with somebody or, or talking to somebody over the computer, as opposed to, you know, go, my wife makes fun of me that, you know, she's like, oh, you're going to leave the house twice this week. Good for you, you know? <laughs> yeah. And the traditional way of doing network marketing is it was outside of my comfort zone. And so I was trying to build a business in a way that completely went, my grain goes this way. And they were saying, build a business this way. And it told, and it was, it was a struggle. Some people that's a great fit for them. And I, I think that's reason one. I think reason number two is that there's a lot of people who will get involved in network marketing who come, you know, Eric Worre says it really well that you will either be rewarded or punished um, when you join network marketing for the past, your, the history, your history, what, you know, what relationships have you built in the past? How do people perceive you? You'll either be rewarded or punished for that. And there's a lot of people I think that struggle because they get into network marketing and their warm market doesn't perceive them as a person of value or a person of success. 
And it's very hard to overcome that when your friends are like, dude, that's just Johnny down the block. You know, we all know him. He's a loser. He was like drinking beer with us on Saturdays. He's not a businessman. And one of the things that I liked about coming online was that it cre I was able not to create a false persona, but to create a new persona based on how I wanted people to perceive me. I wanted people to perceive me as a person of value, somebody who could uh, teach and train and lead with valuable information before I gave them a sales pitch. And it wasn't all about, uh, you know, just my business opportunity. And I was able to create that. And what's interesting is now my warm market sees me that way, even though they didn't previously, because I've got this third party validation of all these people online that go, oh, wow, you've spoken at events and you've won these awards and you've done all these things and you got these accolades. Well, now my warm market goes, oh, wow, that guy's, he's a guy. And now they'll come to me. So I, I think th those are a few of the reasons. I mean, obviously there's, I'm sure there's more than just those two, but I believe those are probably the two biggest reasons why most people struggle with the traditional methods. That was, that was awesome because I, I know, like as you shared that, I'm, I'm nodding my head because I'm thinking, yeah, that's exactly how I felt. And so I know that there's a lot of listeners right now that can probably really relate to that to that experience as well. And I think it's really important for us to hear it from from other people, especially now other people that are successful, um, because being in those being in that place of struggle, mm -hmm. I remember the network marketing industry, and it wasn't just me; it was, it was a couple of friends, a couple of close friends as well that struggled with it, and they were successful, talented, awesome guys you know right. what i mean that they had confidence they were great with people and yet they still couldn't make it work and i remember having a conversation with one of my friends and he was like dude this industry is killing my confidence yeah <laughs> you know like i'm successful here and here and here and yeah. then i'm i can't get anything going here i feel like such a loser yeah i think it's so important for anybody listening right now that you know if if, if your self-doubt has been crushed if your confidence has been crushed because of your past experiences or past struggles just understand that maybe it's just because you haven't found the right path. Like you said, it was going against the against your grain, right? Yeah, yeah, it really was. Yeah, so valuable, so valuable. So I'm I'm just hoping people are are kind of inspired and motivated by hearing hearing your experiences and your story. Okay, so let's talk about online marketing now. So you transitioned to online marketing in you were saying about 2013. Correct. So you haven't been online for very long and to, to, to see the amount of success you've been able to create, that, that's a relatively short amount of time based on the average of what I see. Yeah. So I'm really interested, what, what was it like for you coming online? Did you struggle or did, did everything kind of click for you? And if it did, why? Why, why, why did it click? Yeah, no, it didn't click right away. Okay. Um, I was like everybody else. I struggled, I felt overwhelmed. Um, I think the thing that separates the winners from the people who quit, the winners, I don't want to call them losers, but the winners from the quitters are that the people who win, they keep going through that feeling of overwhelm and frustration. And most importantly, they take action through it. One of my favorite quotes, I believe it's Confucius who said, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand. And there's so many people. In fact, I, I just got off the phone with somebody a couple of uh, weeks ago. I guess it was last week, maybe, who just said, I just don't think I can do this. And, you know, I've been going through courses and, um, you know, trying to figure out what to do. And I just don't think I can do it. And I said, well, what action have you taken? Like, tell me what specifically. Well, nothing. I just nothing yet. I'm still trying to figure out what to do. I just don't, I want to make sure I don't break Google. I want to make sure I don't lose my Facebook <laughs> account. I want to make sure I have every single green light on the journey to success before I even step on the pedal or get in the car. And it's, it's yeah. never going to work that way. And for me, I, I simply failed forward faster than anybody else. That was, that was my key. Uh, that was my secret. Everybody's like, well, how did you do it? You just, are you an anomaly? You're so successful and you, you people, you know, you kind of made a name for yourself so quickly. All I did was screw up a lot more than most other people. I was not afraid to have those moments of failure. And so many people are just so worried about, well, what if I, what if I fail? And for me, what I do is I just ask myself, what is the worst thing that could happen if I fail? You know, I want, I want to go what worst case scenario. If I try to go online and do this thing and it doesn't work, like the worst things I could come up with were maybe 
people might make fun of me, you know, leave ne negative comments. Like, who are you to think that you have the right to give advice or teach stuff online? What success have you had? I thought, can I live with that? With that being the worst thing that could happen to me? And the answer was yes. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to go broke. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to figure this thing out. And if that's the worst that happens to me, I can find, I can, I can muddle through that. So that was, that was really what I did. Um, but I, I didn't, I definitely did not have, uh, immediate success. I'd say I started, I struggled for a solid three to four months before I started getting any leads at all. And I think part of it was because I kept jumping from this deal to that deal and this to this. And I didn't really know who to listen to. I was spending time, you know, I, it was like, this guy would say one thing and this guy would say another thing and this would say another. And I would be like, you know, oh, well, let me try this and let me try this. And in some ways that was good because I found out through experience what worked and what didn't. But looking back now, if I had to do it differently, what I would do is number one, I would say, okay, number one, is this person that I'm getting advice from, have they created some results? And are they the kind of results that I, that I want to create? So that would be the first thing that I would ask myself. And number two is the way that they're built. Once it goes back to that personality thing mm -hmm. is the way that they're building their business. Does it resonate with me? Can I see myself doing this day in and day out? Because to be an entrepreneur, to be successful as an entrepreneur, it has to be more, more than so much more than just the money. It has, you have to find joy in the journey. And if you don't enjoy the journey, you're absolutely going to quit. And so I would find these people that would talk about, all right, make, you know, 15 Facebook posts a day on your Facebook page for organic traffic. And I'd be like, oh, that sounds like it could work. But then I would think, oh my God, that sounds terrible. I don't know if I could stand making, you know, 15 Facebook posts a day. Some people are awesome and love doing that. I was like, I got to find a different way. So for me, it was about finding a way to build automation, automated systems, leverage. And that's kind of where I think a lot of where I, um, I, a lot of people kind of know that's my skill set is that I'm really good at building systems one time. I'll spend two weeks to build out a system that I can then market and milk that thing for months and months and months. Um, and to me, that's the true definition of, of leverage, you know, of working on your business instead of being a technician in your business. So that was kind of a long-winded answer to your question. I hope it uh, sufficed. No, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Now, I'm interested. I'm always interested in those the, the breakthrough, right? So you say you struggled for a few months before you started to create any results. And you know, usually when we ask people about breakthroughs, they share with us, you know, some mindset breakthrough. But I'm interested in action, like you're saying. You know, it's the things that we actually do. It's the actions that we take. That's how we learn the most. So I'm always interested in what were the specific actions that you took that actually started to create results for you? What did you? What were the activities? What were the money making activities that you did that helped you to create results and your first leads and first sales? Okay. So, um, I, I, I will answer that specifically. And I think a lot of times the reasons why people have to give mindset answers is because what's going on in your mind is what determines the actions you're going to take. And there was a mindset shift. So let mm -hmm. me say, explain the mindset shift first, and then I'll explain how that led to the appropriate actions. Perfect. The big mindset shift for me was that I stopped chasing the money. I stopped I stopped being the, the consummate pitch man. Hey, this thing is awesome because, hey, you gotta get into this uh, ground floor opportunity. Oh my God, amazing big launch. Get in now or the terrorists are gonna win, as Frank Kern likes to say, you know? <laughs> and that was, you know, I was just, I was this hypey, I was so desperate to make a sale that I wasn't putting my focus on just helping people. I'm just giving value and content and that pushed people away in the same way that the traditional model of me chasing people around and calling my friends and family chase them away. Mm -hmm. It was the same thing online because I was still the needy, desperate pitch man who was just, I just need to get into your wallet and make a sale so I can recoup my investment on this thing. It was all about me and it wasn't about them. And so the minute that I stopped worrying about the money. The minute that I stopped chasing the money, 
is when the money started to show up. It's when I started just giving value. And so the actions were that I, I just started, I, I based my entire business from the time that I had success on a simple little three-step formula that I call the S3 formula. Study, share, suggest. And that's how I built my entire business. I, I went out and I would, t I would read a book uh, or I would go through a course and I would study and I'm getting a little feedback. I'm not sure if that's my end or your end. Okay, is that you? So, to you, I am too. It's getting a little bit choppy here. Let's, yeah, I can throw on let's headphones. Let's keep rolling here. Okay. No, it's, it should be fine. It should okay. be fine. So um, anyway, the, I, I built my entire business on this S3 strategy, which is I call it study, share, suggest. And I, I would go out and I would buy a course or uh, read a book, and I would highlight things that I thought were really relevant that would be helpful. And then I would share something that I learned. I would create a video. I'd put it on YouTube and say, hey, if you'd like to know how to X, Y, and Z, I've got something that I think will really help you. I'm going to share it with you in this video. I would share. And then I made a suggestion. Here's what I would recommend you do next if you also want to get X, Y, Z result. And whenever I started going that route of building my business as opposed to hey check out all the features of this amazing company check out all of the 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 amazing check out this awesome comp plan and why it's better than everybody else which wasn't working when i just started focusing on sharing what i was getting value from and then making suggestions number one people started to perceive me as an authority there's a great story um i think it's in uh, cialdini's book called influence uh he talks about how this um, uh, this this nurse gave um, eardrops uh, mistakenly gave eardrops into this guy's ass. Um, guy guy came in for for an ear infection and and the doctor gave her a note and she was like okay I'll follow the note and she goes and she puts eardrops into the guy's butt and it turns out that the doctor's note said place three drops in R abbreviated and then ear our ear and so the nurse read it place in rear and she didn't even think twice to question this recommendation and i like to tell that story and how it relates to marketing because whenever i started teaching it positioned me as an authority and whenever i give a suggestion people are less likely to question your motives uh, they're less le likely to question whether or not you have their best interest at heart because you just prove to them that you're willing to help them for free by putting out a great piece of content, a YouTube video, a blog post, something that says, hey, I'm willing to help you. They go, wow, this person really seems to know what he's talking about. They perceive you as that authority. And in the same way that the nurse didn't even question, well, this, this order, as ridiculous as it sounds, came from a doctor, an authority figure. I guess I'll put the eardrops in this guy's butt. People started saying, oh, well, Tyson gave me this great advice in a YouTube video and he recommends this product or this tool or this program. I'm going to go and check it out. That same principle of establishing authority and uh, likability and getting people to trust you, all of that um, came into play with me shifting my, uh, my actions and then my results, of course. So it was just the, the, the short answer to your question is that I just went out and I started creating content and I started creating helpful videos without thinking about what was in it for me first. It was about having my audience's best interest at heart before I had mine, uh, my, my best interest at my best interest at heart. Awesome. And, and that right there, uh, cause you mentioned the, the, the concept of attraction marketing earlier. I mean that right there, what you just explained is the perfect definition of what attraction marketing is is all about so if you if you're watching this and you still have some questions about what is this attraction marketing you guys keep talking about just rewind back and listen to what Tyson shared there because that is that's exactly what it's all about and uh, and I think once you understand that um, and then just simply take action on it is is really the important thing exactly yeah awesome so Tyson we're interested about what's going on in your business right now you, you've, you've taken us sort of through your through your journey over the last few years What's working for Tyson in your business right now in marketing? We know that marketing changes all the time. There's new platforms all the time. Um, what's working for you right now to, to generate leads and create sales in your business? Sure. Well, um, first of all, I want to make sure that everybody understands because, you know, there's 
and I was, I was like this whenever I first started online, I was looking for the system or the tool that would make me successful. And if you are looking for anything outside of yourself first to make you successful, you're going to continue to struggle. That's probably the other thing that I really, that really changed me was that I started focusing on developing my skills and learning things that you know, learning, you know, how to drive traffic, learning copywriting, um, learning how to do a webinar, those kinds of things, developing those skills that nobody else was developing. Those were the things that allowed me to start creating success. So I want to, before I tell any specific like systems or tools or things that I'm using, I want to, it's very important that I preface that with there is no two, one tool that will make you successful. There's no one system that's going to get leads for you like magic, right? It's you. It's your ability to provide value to other people. And so um, there, for me, whenever I create any campaign, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through this in a little bit more depth whenever we go into the premium uh, membership and I walk you through one of my funnels, but I, there's three steps that I really take in order to build out a campaign. Number one, I ask myself, who is my targeted audience? Uh, in other words, who is it that I want to attract? And I find a lot of people complicate this because they're asking themselves, you know, way too many complicated questions about building their avatar. Here's where I start. I start by saying, who is already buying the thing I wanna sell? Who are the people who are already buying it. If I'm promoting a system like Elite Marketing Pro, for example, that's a system that I am the number one income earner in. I've, I've won their award for being their number one income earner the last two years in a row. Um, I earn a lot of my income from there, but I also have my own products, uh, training courses and memberships and things that I sell on my own that I earn income from. But Elite Marketing Pro, I, I, I love those guys. I think they're, they're offering a ton of value. I promote their system, I promote their products. I, I think what they do is awesome. And so um, I, you know, like I said, I, I use their system and, oh, let me readjust here. I'm going to drink a water. And so, and so um, I looked at that system and I said, okay, who am I going to target? I just asked myself, who are the people who are, who's the mass majority of people who are already buying their products? I found it was mostly network marketers and affiliate marketers. Okay. Well, why don't I why don't I make those people my target audience instead of trying to go out and find, you know, the single mom and convince her that online marketing should be for her? Why don't I take the people that clearly are already buying this product? That was step number one. Step number two, and this is a big one that people screw up big time. I ask myself, what is the first step I want these people to take, and more importantly, is it a logical first step? to ask a stranger to take with me. So whenever I create a marketing funnel, I'm asking myself, if, I, if a stranger that I met on the internet asked me to do this, would I run the other way? Or would I say, this seems like a reasonable first step? Too many marketers, as I said, they're so desperate to make a sale that they're doing what is the equivalent of walking into a bar, introducing yourself to a girl, and then sticking your hand down her pants. It's not going to go well for you if you do that, right? And so what I, what I do is I say, okay, what would be the, the most logical first step for somebody to take? It might be like in my photography business, um, it's, and it's different for different businesses. You have to understand what is it you're selling, what is your conversion mechanism going to be, and that's really one of the other questions you have to ask yourself not just how am I going to get leads, but what is my conversion vehicle going to be? Am I going to get on the phone with these people? Am I going to do a webinar? Am I going to have a video sales letter, a written sales letter? Uh, what can I expect my conversion rates to be from that, that conversion mechanism? Those are all questions you have to ask yourself. Um, and then the third thing I do is, uh, I guess there's really four things. Uh, the fourth, so the third thing would be figure out what my conversion vehicle is going to be. And then the fourth thing is, ask myself, what are these people currently struggling with that I can create content that would attract them to me, that I could create a free giveaway, or I could do a webinar on a certain topic that would attract them to me because I'm offering to solve their problems for free. So um, just as an example, 
ev like I said, every business is going to be different. And so just because I say, hey, here's how I've built this funnel, doesn't mean that that exact same funnel is going to work for your business. And a great example or a great uh, way to explain this is that in my, uh, let's say I'm promoting Elite Marketing Pro. I might lead with just a $47 ebook as a simple, hey, let's get you in the door, see if attraction marketing is for you, and then let the system upsell them into various other parts of that program. If I'm selling a $47 ebook, different conversion mechanisms, I don't need as much, you know, I don't necessarily need as much relationship building to sell a $47 product as opposed to my wedding services. We sell a wedding package for $4,000. I'm not going to be able to just get a bride online and say, hey, I, we've never met before. Let me cut you a check for $4,000. So for me, this, you know, if I'm marketing my wedding services, I say, okay, who's traditionally bought my wedding services in the past? Well, it's females between the ages of you know, 22 through 30 uh, who live in a 90-mile radius of my zip code. That's going to be my target audience. What kind of questions are they asking? Well, they're wanting to know what vendors should I book? Um, you know, how, how can I make sure that I have a successful wedding day? That, you know, where should I get my flowers done? I might put out content that would attract those people to me. And then I ask myself, what's a logical first step? Well, a logical first step might be, hey, call and book your engagement pictures with us to see if you like our studio or um, call and we'll sit down with you for a free consultation um, just to sit down and, and go through uh, the process of, you know, helping you figure out a schedule for your wedding day. This will get her to know me, like me, trust me. And then that's all part of my conversion process, sitting down with them, talking through things with them, getting them to trust me, and then asking them for the $4,000 sale. Whereas online, it's a, you know, it's a different process because it's a different product. It's a different group of people, um, much more worldwide. I can have a little bit more leverage. So you have to build out the right funnel that is right for your business and for your product. So I, I, I wish there was a, I wish that there was a like one size fits all, hey, here's the funnel you should build that's going to make you successful. It doesn't work that way. Um, I don't even know if I just answered your question or not, Norbert. So ask again. No, if you I didn't. I'll be happy to answer it again. <laughs> no, you you absolutely did, Tyson. That was uh, th this has been incredible, incredible training. And maybe it's just because you and I are both systems guys. So right. I mean, everything that you say, I'm just like yes, 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 because we think very much, very much alike as as far as marketing is concerned. Um, so no, I mean you you absolutely nailed it. I love the way that you. You know, you took us through that that step by step process. What what I can see that you see is you see the way that the system works. Right. You see how to take a person through a step by step process. And what I've seen with a lot of my students is I've seen a lot of people struggle with that. They they have a tough time putting all these like they've they've learned all these different marketing things. Yeah. But they don't know how to put it together into a streamlined process that works. And I think that's one of the unique strengths about somebody like yourself and myself is we can really easily see that step-by-step -step process. And I think maybe some people just have a little bit of a challenge with that. Sure. Well, and not to too blatantly tease your audience uh, with the premium content, but what I'm going to show when we get to the premium stuff is literally how I put those pieces together in order to attract the right person, uh, have them take the most logical first step, and how to move them through a sequence where they will convert, uh, hopefully in my in my instance, on autopilot. And that, that really has been um, the motivation and in, in the inspiration uh, behind this online profit playbook project that I've been doing over the last few months is exactly that, being able to show people a practical application of all the theory that we learn, actually how it looks like in practice. So that's awesome, I'm looking forward to that. Tyson, let's wrap this up because I know we could probably stay on here and, and you could teach and train for another few hours, uh, but we got to wrap it up. So let's wrap it up nice and nice and tight here. Uh, just leave our viewers, you know, everybody watching right now, I'm sure that they're looking for a breakthrough in their business. You know, the next 30 to 90 days, they're looking to commit to their business and make a breakthrough. What are three tips that you could give them, three things maybe to focus on or three shifts that they need to make if they want to create a breakthrough in the next 90 days? Number one, immerse yourself. Every single time I've created success in any business, it was because I, I did it quickly because I immersed myself 
in that world. I remember when I was, I'll go back to my photography for a moment. Whenever I was building my photography business and I was learning those skills, I, I was literally, every chance I got, I was either reading a book or looking at lighting patterns, how people were lighting their subjects or posing ideas. And what's interesting is um, many of you have maybe heard of, of a reticular activator. Um, the reticular activator is, it's like the, the part of your brain when you, when you are immersed in something, you start to see things that have always existed that you never knew that you never, you never recognized before. A good example would be like if you buy a new, a new car, you go to the car lot, you buy the shiny new car and you drive it off the lot and all of a sudden you start seeing that same car all over the road. It's not that the car magically appeared at the same time you bought the car. It's just that now your brain is in tune to seeing that car on the road. You start to see things. You start to see opportunities that you never would have seen before because you're now immersed in it. And like whenever I started building my photography business, I was immersed in that world. My wife and I would be watching a TV show late at night and I would go, oh, look, they got the hair light placed on the far right hand side and they're short lighting her from the left. And I saw things that I didn't realize. They were always there before. I just started to realize them because I was immersed in that world. I did the same thing online. I immersed myself. Um, so that would be the number one tip I would give you. Number two, don't be afraid to fail. Nobody is consistent and that's why most people fail. Most people are too afraid to take action. They're too afraid to fail. They're too afraid of what other people are going to think of them. And that's why most people that start any business are going to struggle and fail. They let that little voice inside of their head. You guys, we all have it. I have it. Norbert has it. It's just that the voice is softer in our heads now. Um, you know, I'll use another analogy. It's like um, the elephant that the circus elephant that is pinned to the ground with a rope and a stake. This huge multi-ton animal could so easily rip that stake out of the ground and escape. It doesn't even try. Why? Because it's been conditioned since it, since it was, what do you call it, a, a baby elephant, a calf? Since it was a calf, it's been conditioned to believe I can't pull this stake out of the ground. When it was a baby, they put that stake in the ground and that elephant started to have these beliefs formed in its head. I just, when I'm staking in the ground, I'm here. I can't get away. And that adult elephant believes that as well. And he won't even try. And so that really takes me to the third tip, which is take action. Get over your limiting beliefs. Get out there. Just start taking action action. Get, don't be afraid to fail and just do it. You will, as I said, the Confucius saying earlier, I do and I understand. That's where your overwhelm will go away. Overwhelm is nothing more than information constipation. It's just you getting a, a, a backup of so much information that you haven't done anything with that you go, well, I just, I just don't know what to do. So I guess I'll do nothing because I'm so paralyzed by all of this information. Once you start taking action, you start to have clarity. You start to understand what works, what doesn't work. And that's obviously when you're going to start seeing results. I hope that helps. That was awesome. Tyson, really appreciate this. This was a powerful, powerful 30 minutes here. Um, I just want to make sure there's many people as possible out there can hear it because uh, I think it's going to help a lot of people. Uh, really love everything that you've shared here, Tyson. It's been really, really, really amazing. Again, I want to thank you for for giving of your time. I know you got a uh, a busy season here um, with your three businesses that you got running, but I really appreciate you sharing this information with our audience. It's going to be really helpful. Absolutely, happy to be here, and thanks for uh, sharing me with your audience. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, digging into the premium session for our premium members. Uh, Tyson's actually going to go open up one of his funnels and walk us through step by step his process to generate leads and make sales. It's going to help you to put all these pieces together and see a practical application, how it's actually done in the real world. So I hope you join us for that. Um, thank you again, Tyson, for being here. And everybody, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We will see you next week on another episode of the Online Playmaker Sessions. Everybody take care. I hope you enjoyed this week's Playmaker session. If you love the session, subscribe now to our YouTube channel so you never miss our weekly episodes. Be sure to also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Just type in Online Playmakers in the search bar and click subscribe and be sure to leave a five-star review. 
All of the episodes, show notes, transcripts, resources, and bonuses are available on the blog over at onlineprofitplaybook.com, along with several bonus free tutorials I've created for you as well. Your fast track to results is to follow the playmakers. You can download their closely guarded playbooks and follow them step by step to grow your influence, build your audience, and create results in your business right now. Head over to onlineprofitplaybook.com and join the playmakers to get full access today. Thank you again for joining us today and be sure to tune in next week as we bring you another power-packed session with the top playmakers online. This is Norbert Orlowitz signing off.